In this video, we'll introduce the convolution theorem and some of its applications in radio astronomy and in signal processing. The first thing we're going to want to cover is what the convolution is. So a convolution is an operation that acts on two functions and outputs a new function. So we'll define two functions here, f, which is a function of a variable t, and g, which is also a function of a variable t. So if we convolve f and g, and we usually denote this with an asterisk in between the two functions, so this is a convolution of f and g, we get a new function, which is what these brackets grouping together are supposed to show, that these are now one function uh, that is a function of a new variable tau, which is very similar to this variable t, but we'll show in a minute that it's slightly different. So this is defined, and we'll just start with the mathematical definition here, is defined to be the integral of f of t multiplied by the other function, g, but now we'll introduce this new parameter, tau, to shift g along t. So tau is an offset from the t that we're using here, and we integrate this product of the two functions, f and g, over t. And that's the definition of a convolution. So it's a little bit difficult to capture what's going on in this integral. Uh, so we'll try to describe in words what's happening. Uh, we take one function, f of t, and, uh, and by doing this process of sliding the other function, g, past it, and then integrating uh, the product of those two functions, what we're really doing is smearing out f by g. If g were a nice little compact function, let's say that is, uh, is zero in most places and then goes up to one and then back down. And we slide this back and forth along the time axis here. Then g will take whatever falls within this boxed area and sum it all up. Uh, and, and output a single value for that. So we could take g, if this is what g is, uh, then we could take g and slide it along f, and it would smear out f by the width of this little box here. So one way to think of a convolution is it's a blurring function that blurs f by g. And in fact, that's exactly what's happening if you ever use Photoshop or Paint or something like that and you ask it to blur um, or dilate or, or one of these other operations on an image, what it's actually going to do is it's going to convolve your image, which is one function, uh, by another function, which could be a Gaussian kernel or it could be some other function that they've defined for you. And I slipped in the word kernel there. Uh, often when talking about the convolution, uh, one refers to the kernel as the, the second function that you're convolving by. Although you'll notice that, there's, that these two, uh, f and g, enter into this equation very uh, symmetrically. And you could define a new variable that is tau minus t. Uh, if we wanted to define a new variable uh, x that is tau minus t, then this over here would be tau minus t x. This would become dx. Uh, it just shows that this convolution, in this convolution, f and g are actually completely symmetric. So you can call one of them the kernel if you want to, but they actually appear completely symmetrically. So what could help us understand what is going on here is if we had an animation of g sliding along the time axis as a function of tau uh, and smearing out another function f. And fortunately there is just such an animation available on Wikipedia under the definition of a convolution. In this animation we see 
that g, which is denoted in red, is being slid along the time axis. And so each different offset as it's sliding along is a different tau. And it slides over the function f, which is a function of t, and it's denoted in blue. And it's static. And uh, the convolution of those two functions shows up uh, in black here. And the yellow area that appears as g slides over f is the area under f times g. So that area uh, in yellow is exactly what's being added up and is output as that black function, which is f convolved with g uh, as a function of the separation of those two functions. So uh, in one sense, we are seeing mechanically what's going on inside of that integral, that we're seeing one function, g, being slid along, multiplied by f, uh, and the area it, in yellow is being integrated together. Uh, but another way of looking at this is to see uh, one function, g, that's being slid across and is smearing out uh, the function f. And we could imagine if we had a different function uh, f that maybe had a lot of noise that went up and down here, um, that what would happen with this uh, as g slid, slid over it is that we'd see a lot of that up and down wiggling being smeared over and smoothed out uh, and we'd get a much smoother function out of this. And generally that's uh, what we can think of the convolution is doing as blurring or smoothing out one function by another. And in this case, because we're watching g slide by, uh, we would think of g as the kernel that is smoothing out f. Now that we hopefully have a better idea of what a convolution is uh, when we convolve two functions, it's time to get a deeper understanding of what the convolution means by moving on to the convolution theorem. Now the convolution theorem is a very important theorem that relates this convolution process that we've just described to an, a separate process which happens in the Fourier domain that is complementary to the domain that we've defined here. So if t happens to correspond to the variable time, then the convolution theorem relates functions, convolving functions that are a function of time to an operation in the Fourier domain of frequency. To jump to the chase, the convolution theorem says that if you take the Fourier transform, and here this is a capital F to denote Fourier transform, the Fourier transform of F of T, and you multiply that by the Fourier transform of G of T, And what you actually have done is you've formed the Fourier transform of F convolved with G. This is a very important result. Uh, this says that by convolving two functions together, what you're actually doing is multiplying their Fourier transforms. So just to use an alternate notation for what we've just written here, if I use a little caret above my function to denote the Fourier transform of it, and I say that omega is, say, frequency, um, which is the Fourier complement to the uh, time axis, that by multiplying f hat and g hat, which are both uh, functions of omega, and I take the Fourier transform of that, that is exactly what I would get if I convolved F and G, just like we did above. So we've written down the convolution theorem twice here, once up here up above, and once down below. They're both saying exactly the same thing. And in words, what they're saying is that what we had interpreted before, if uh, we go back to the case of 
of showing f and having it be a noisy function of t. Um, and if we convolved again by g, where g was maybe that uh, flat-topped function that we had uh, seen in the animation, what we had uh, interpreted in the time domain, in, in, the, in the t variable, as this function g sliding across f and smoothing it out to produce a smoothed version of f that's kind of averaged over the width of, of this uh, function g that we had drawn. So it might produce a function that is much smoother here and starts going up a little early and comes down a little bit later and uh, smooths out all these wiggles. Uh, an alternate and completely accurate way of describing what's happening is to say that in the Fourier domain there is a function f uh, that has a noisy spectrum uh, as a function of omega, which is the Fourier uh, complement to the coordinate t. And what we have as g is a, the Fourier transform of g is going to look like a sinc function. And what that sinc function is doing is multiplying the spectrum of f in frequency domain. What we get is a new spectrum from the convolution of those two that looks like f, uh, but is tapered off and uh, does not have all the structure at high uh, omega that f originally did because the g function, the Fourier transform of it, was multiplied and it tapered off uh, the high frequency components. So what we had interpreted here as smoothing arising from sliding this function over this uh, the noisy function f here is actually completely uh, equivalently described as the loss of these Fourier components out here in the function f so that in the convolution of the two uh, we only have the the uh, parts of that spectrum that fell within the spectrum of g so the convolution theorem is actually a very powerful way to describe uh, what's going on with functions in two different domains. We're taking uh, what happens to two functions in one domain and we're relating it to the Fourier complement. So if I multiply two functions in time domain, I've convolved their spectra in frequency domain. And if I multiply two functions in frequency domain, I've convolved their, uh, the time functions uh, in this domain. So the happy result of this is you can usually try to pick a domain, either the time domain or the frequency domain, in which it's easiest to describe the operation that you've just done to your functions, where you've multiplied them here. Uh, it might be easier to describe it as a multiplication than as a convolution over here, and vice versa. And the convolution theorem gives you the power to switch domains at will uh, to whatever is most convenient to describe what's happening to your two functions. Once you're used to looking for it, the convolution theorem crops up in a lot of places and is one of the most powerful ways to switch between the uh, time and frequency domains or in any two domains that are Fourier complementary. Uh, the convolution theorem is a very powerful way to understand what's going on in both domains simultaneously.